You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. I, I know y'all heard about it, right? Have y'all heard about that big uh, child trafficking case? Yeah, man. Like, I don't know if y'all heard about it because it's been on the news a little bit, but like the governor of Florida and the governor of Texas, they, they were human trafficking. Yeah, man, they, they took a bunch of people and loaded them into buses and then moved them across the country. And, you know, we've been calling it like, you know, moving migrants or whatever. But what this is, is human trafficking. So we're going to talk about this today on this episode of the Grio Daily, the only podcast that tells you to move black people, get out the way. I'm Michael Harriet, world famous white peopleologist, and this is the Grio Daily. Yeah, man. I don't know if y'all heard y'all heard about this, man, but it's a it was a big story um, a few weeks ago. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, who you know has one of those jaw lines, like you know he reads with his mouth open, and the governor of Texas who is just a purebred racist. What they did was they took some immigrants and they just loaded them into buses and planes and then shipped them to places, what they call sanctuary cities. What they really mean is places that are disproportionately non-white, blue states. And a lot of people called it a political stunt, but what this really was was human trafficking. And they were just literally dumped like human garbage in front of the vice president's house. That's unchristian, un-Texan, un-American. Although a lot of people were outraged, I wasn't because, see, I have actually read a couple of history books and I know people have done this all of the time, right? Like this kind of human trafficking actually happened a lot of times in American history. So we're going to talk about a couple of those instances today, right? So one of the craziest uh, instances of this was, and, you know, people have been actually talking about this, was, you know, right during the civil rights era when, you know, we were striking down Jim Crow laws and there were states and cities around America who just paid black people to move. And I know you're thinking, well, you know, is it forced migration if you pay people to move? Yeah, kind of, right? Because when they say pay people to move, that means that they first forcefully disenfranchise those people. And then after they disenfranchise them, they passed the Jim Crow laws that forced black people to be caged in certain areas and to adhere to certain racist laws. And then when they said, well, you can't go to school with white people, you can't work around white people, and you can't live around white people, well, we'll give you money to move. So it wasn't the money that made it force. It was all of the stuff before they gave the black people to money. It's like if you, gave, you know, you attracted a child to your car by offering them a lollipop and then said, well, I didn't kidnap her. They got into my car willingly. Nah, bro, we know what you were doing. And in this case, these forced migrations in the 50s and the 60s, they paid black families and black people to basically get out of their states, which is really a form of ethnic cleansing. And it worked, right? Um, in, in these southern states, Mississippi and Georgia, who did this, they took the same tactic as Ron DeSantis and, and Abbott in Texas. They said, well, look, they did it willingly. But was it of their free will if you have enacted every kind of legislation and social policy that made it so that these people will have to move in order to live? What's the difference between that and explicitly holding a gun up to their head? But again, they don't call that force. And this has happened in other places a number of times. Um, You know, that place that they call Central Park, that was actually a forced migration 
of people who were living in that area of Manhattan. It was majority black. It was a thriving black community. And they said, nah, we want to park here. And they just forced the people out of the place called Seneca Village to move elsewhere because white people wanted this space, right? And, you know, we have this concept in America called eminent domain, which means that like the government can actually confiscate or say that they own your property. Um, and this has happened a number of, time, of times in America. One of the interesting ways that they do it is to benefit white people with water, right? So I, I don't know if you've ever heard of Lake Lanier in Georgia. It's this place right outside of Atlanta that has this man-made lake. Well, that man-made lake is actually built over a thriving black town. And if like and when I say they built it over the town, that doesn't mean that they like destroyed the town. No, they just flooded it. Like they just literally put water over there. And if you go in Lake Lanier right now, there's still rooftops and homes and a a black racing track that's still down there underwater where this black community used to live that they made, they forced the people to exit. What happened was that there was a white woman who said she was raped and then they just said, we're gonna kill all the black people unless they move. And in the, a matter of two weeks, the population of the town dwindled. And this also happened in Indiana. And this also happened in Kentucky. This also happened in Oklahoma. This also happened in many states and cities around the country. There are stories of, oh wait, you wait, y'all don't even know about white capping, right? Right? Like when in Indiana, the Ku Klux Klan or the White League would just go around and purge their communities of black people by white capping them. And a lot of times this was to take their land. Sometimes it was just to ensure that, you know, uh, they couldn't disenfranchise the black people. So they would ensure that they would win the next election by just getting rid of the black voters out of the place. If you Google most of the racial massacres in America, what you'll find is that they didn't just kill a whole bunch of black people. As a matter of fact, the number of black people that they forced out of towns and cities and states is far more than the people that they just killed because the killing was just a tool to force black people to migrate out of their cities or towns. And that's what we know in history we euphemize as the first great migration after the Civil War when black people moved up north and began populating majority black cities. And we like to euphemize that by saying that these people moved for opportunities or, you know, to get jobs. But what that was in a lot of instances was the result of racial terrorism, that migration. And some of it was because of unequal laws, because of Jim Crow laws. They had constructed a society that black people's essentially couldn't live in, couldn't work in, couldn't survive in. And so they had to move. It was a forced migration. And it was kind of like what Ron DeSantis and, and Greg Abbott did in their whole state. Well, they did it again, right? Like right after Jim Crow or during the era of Jim Crow, you know, we think of uh, some of these cities and as being majority black or some of the areas and cities as being majority black because of Jim Crow laws now. Some of those places, they just forced the black people to different parts of the city. Take Chicago, for instance, right? So, you know, we think of Chicago as having these gangs, but those black gangs were actually created because of white gangs. So the reason the Democratic Party is so strong in Chicago is because the Democratic, what they call the Democratic machine, was actually just a bunch of white gangs. Um, many of the gang leaders eventually became uh, big politicians 
in the state. And those white gangs would terrorize black people when they move into their neighborhoods and they controlled territory. They were gang wars, right? So in the 1940s, the city of Chicago had their real estate board passed laws that basically moved 75% of the black people in Chicago out of their neighborhoods and hoarded them into these buildings that were built by the federal government using government months, money that we call projects, housing projects, Cabrini Green. Those projects were built with federal money. Well, they didn't just say, hey, black people, won't y'all go from this nice home unto, into these projects with all the other poor black people. Now, what they did is the political apparatus, which was run by gangs, Reagan Holtz, Reagan's Colts, which is the origin of the Indianapolis Colts. We'll get into that later. These gangs basically forced black people out of their neighborhoods. And once these black people were hoarded into these housing projects, what were they going to do? They were going to respond to this terrorism by protecting themselves, by creating their own version of these gangs modeled after the white gangs. And that's how gangs in Chicago became so prevalent. It was a response to white gangs and forced migration. And all of Amer all over America, this is true. Like, you know, we like to think of Jim Crow laws as, you know, something that had to be overturned or some piece of legislation. But in most places, these were just unwritten rules that were enforced by violence and terrorism against black people to not just disenfranchise them, not just to scare them, but to make them migrate into these places where they could offer themselves protection. And that is how America forced migration of non-white people for years before DeSantis came up with his brilliant idea to human traffic migrants to New York and to Martha's Vineyard and to DC. And the interesting thing about this, just like the black people from the 50s and the 1860s and the 1920s and you know every 50 years or so, is that those black people weren't illegal just like these migrants weren't illegal. Like that's one thing you have to know about the current narrative is that United States law allows for people to seek asylum by just crossing the border and telling, you know, immigration officials, I come here to seek asylum, whether it's political asylum, whether they're be, being hunted by gangs, whether they want, just want to be safe. They can actually seek asylum by crossing the border and saying, I seek asylum. It's not illegal immigration. It is the prescribed legal way to apply for asylum in America. And that's who DeSantis and Abbott was human trafficking, not illegal aliens, as they would like to say, not undocumented immigrants, as they would like to say. These people came into the country legally, kind of like DeSantis' people did. And then they were human trafficked across the country and it was kind of by their consent, but what you gonna do when the people loading you onto the bus got guns, got the full authority of the state, and has the American government backing their every action and history on their side? Well, you do the only thing that you can do. You move, you get out the way. And that's why you need to download the Rio app. That's why you need to subscribe to this podcast on whichever platform you listen to. And that's why we leave you every week with the famous black saying. And today's black saying is, it ain't illegal if they got a gun. It's just American. We'll see you next time on the Griot Daily. 
If you liked what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download the Grio app, subscribe to the show, and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcasts at thegrio.com. You are now listening to the Grio's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified.